Hello everyone, I hope you are doing well. So in this video, we are going to discuss lead code problem today. Our today's problem is night dialer and it is going to be a medium level problem. So the problem says that uh, we have been uh, given the movements of a night. So we already know how a night moves. It moves in eight directions and we have been given a numeric uh, keypad. So we have to dial a number of length n and making sure that we can only make moves like this and like a night moves. Right. So basically we can start from any number but the next number should be like a move of a night. Right. And we can only stand on numeric digit. So this star and hash are not allowed. Right. So for example, let me just, uh, take this particular thing and I'll show you a quick demonstration. So let's say, let's say I'm starting from 5. Let's say I'm starting from 5. Right. What are all the places I can go to? From 5, there is not actually one single place I can go to because if I try to move like a knight, I'll not be able to land on any numeric value. Now, let's say I'm at 0. So, from 0, where I can go? So, 2 steps here and 1 step to the left and similarly 2 steps upwards and 1 step to the right. So, from 0, I can go to 4 or I can go to 6. So, basically, if I'm standing at 0, I can uh, press 4 after it or I can press 6 after it. This is the only choice that I have, right? Now, similarly, let's say for 3. So, for 3, how many choices I have? I can go to 4 or I can go to 8, right? So, for 3, I can go to 4 or I can go to 8. So, these are the two choices that I have. Now, this problem becomes very simple if you think it in terms of TP, right? So, how do I form the DP states? This is the first task. So, I am going to form a double dimensional DP, DP of IJ. So, what is this ij representing? So, my current state ij is going to represent, i is representing the uh, current digit number. Number in the sense, the place. So, uh, current digit. Uh, how do I say it? Uh, current digit here means that if it is the first digit or this is the second digit or this is the third digit of the number that we are currently trying to form. So, we have to form an n digit number. So, i is representing which of the n digits is this one and j, j is going to represent the current number on keypad, right. So, with the combination of i, j, I know that I am currently on the first digit or the second digit or the third digit. And J is going to represent that if I am currently considering the third digit, I have multiple possibilities. I can be either on 1 or be on 2 or be on 3 or be on 4 or be on 5 and so on. Right. So, let us say I am currently on the third digit and my i is 3 and my current value is 7. Right. So, from 7, where, where can I go? If you look at the night moves from 7, I can go 2 here and 1 here. So, I can go to 2. Or maybe I can go to 6, 2 here and 1 here. So, from 7 I can go to 2 and 6. That means from i is equal to 3, where I take on the next digit and i becomes 4, I can go to either 2 or 6. That means dp of i 3, 7 is going to be dp of 4, 2 plus dp of 4 and 6. So, what I am essentially trying to say is, I am currently at the third digit. Now, I want to move on to the fourth digit. So, what are the different possible ways for me to move? So, I, for that, I need to know what is the current uh, number I am standing on. I am currently on 7. So, I can either go to 2 or I can either go to 6. So, this is how you can figure out what are all the different possible combinations you can make. Now, uh, for a general thing, uh, in this particular problem, only 4 and 6 are the numbers from where you can make 3 moves. Only 5 is the number where you can make 0 moves and all the other numbers you can make exactly 2 moves, right. So, now to find out what are the next steps or from each digit where you can go, there are actually two ways. One way is to hard code the values which I have done currently and the other way is to have the movements of a knight just like we do in a grid DFS or grid BFS. So, we maintain a DX and DY array, then we check whether the next position is a valid position or not and then we can find out the next positions. But uh, I believe this particular method would take a lot of time. Like I tried implementing it, but the implementation was becoming more and more complex. So, at the end, I just decided to make a hard-coded value. 
So you see what I have done is I have uh, stored the positions. So for 0 I can go to 4 and 6, for 1 I can go to 6 and 8, for 2 I can go to 7 and 9, for 3 I can go to 4 and 8 and so on. Right. Now what I have done is I have created a double dimensional vector called dp and which is of n cross 10 dimensions. Now if I am at the last position at n minus 1 position there is no other way and this is the last digit that is why at this particular position the answer will be 1. Why 1? Because I cannot make any moves further and this is going to be the ending digit. So this acts like a base case. Now I have initialized my mod value and I am going through all the values from n minus 2 till greater than minus 1. So this is basically representing the current digit. So I am at n minus 2 at digit then n minus 3 at digit and so on. Now for those all digits I am going to traverse through all the values. So for the jth value I where what are the positions I can go to? So this will be represented by next right and I have already hard coded these values here. Now dp of ij is going to be dp of ij plus dp of i plus 1 next that means from the current set ij I can go to i plus 1 that is the next digit and from j I can go to this next value right. This is this is based on this particular hard coded value and this is just based on observation from this particular keypad. Now at the end I can just return uh, initialize my answer with 0 and since I can start with any of the 10 numbers from 0 to 9 I have to take the summation of all the values at the 0th position right. So this is what I am doing I am taking answer as answer plus dp or 0i and taking the mod value. So at the end I can just return my answer and this would be my final solution. So let me just quickly submit this and show you that this particular solution works. So you see this passes all the discusses and the solution is absolutely correct. I hope that you guys were able to understand the solution. If you guys did, then consider dropping a like on this video and don't forget to share your thoughts in the comments because your engagement with this particular video really really helps the YouTube algorithm to understand that this video is actually helpful for you and it will be able to reach much more people like you who want to keep solving new problems. So that is it for today. Till the next video drops, keep coding, stay safe, bye bye.